Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex. And, of course, welcome back to the adventure mode in just a moment, because it turns out, when I was recording yesterday, I actually managed to lose the first bit of footage because everything was so hectic, I didn't press recording time. I literally spawned into the adventure mode and was instantly under attack. So, it's going to be a really jarring intro, but a lot of stuff's going to happen today with a lot of building. Also, the music's a bit loud. Because again, rushed and hectic. Hope you enjoy, and now, back to the past, into the adventure mode. Okay, so I apologise if the music is loud and everything, I literally just turned on my recording software, loaded in the adventure mode, and then just left it for a second, and that's why it was so unprepared. Yeah, it's definitely running away, it's getting further away from us. Considering it's faster than us, it doesn't need to do that, so... Now raising our altitude. Think we're close enough now to give it another round of EMP against the Megawatt? Might get a little bit closer, but if, if it's running away at full speed, I literally won't be able to catch it. I'll have to change the torps so they're um, longer range. Oh, look how close we're getting! Okay, maybe I can reach it. Just surfacing now so we can go as fast as we can. Hello. Aye, aye, dead. Yeah, did it. Now, sadly, there's no chance we're going to be able to capture this. It's way too far away, I think. But we can grab its resources and then go back under the water. Okay, a lovely start. EMP once again, proving its worth. Oh, is that everything or no? Okay. Since we're about to upgrade our ship anyway, I'll just add a cargo container out to the bottom of this thing. Then let's go back under the water. And let's go towards the blue portal to safety. Uh, you're not that strong. We could take you out, but honestly, I just want to get to the blue portal now. So I'm going to stay above the water to go at max speed. And then we can start building. I probably won't be building the camera room and everything today. And by the way, thank you for all the suggestions there. So many good suggestions. Um, but I will be probably building it in the next upgrade. I just don't have enough resources right now. Since I really want large missiles. So large torps. Large regular missiles. That's the main thing I'm currently after. Also, love how the wheel literally makes it so I can't see forwards if I want to stay in first person as much as possible, which I do. Lots of things to change. That's the very first thing. I want at least a proper place to sit. Right now, this is nice, but I can't see enough. So for those who are unaware, the blue portal is special as... There we go. As you can see, lots of red portals around us. There are no enemies present in the blue zone, but it will increase our difficulty by several. So now we're on 30. We'll go to 35 once we go through the red portal next. Okay, so, weird start. Let's get building. Okay, I've just went into the designer mode here. Because the blue portal is essentially the designer mode, except for I can't lift it out of the water, I've went to designer mode because otherwise it's so annoying. It doesn't provide any benefit to me, really, other than the fact I get less seasick. So, here we are. And it's going to be a weird thing trying to add 100k to this. So the craft itself is about 90 to 100k already. So we're basically doubling its value, but I don't really know what exactly I want. So the one thing I do know is I want to swap the medium for the large. Yeah, I, for once I'd rather have the larger missiles than the swarm. I always go for swarm, this time I think the large missiles. We could go with huge, but I think it's going to be lighter. I also want a better area to sit in, and I want the craft to be just a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is quite literally copy the front, copy the back, save them as sub-objects, and then destroy it, add an extra middle section, and then reattach them like some weird Frankenstein. That is Frankenstein's monster. I don't know, maybe Frankenstein himself was very weirdly attached. Who knows? So, how am I going to redo my sitting area? Because although it looks like there's a lot of space, there really isn't. But I don't really want to extend this right now, so what I've done is I've literally just <laughs> kind of just dragged it back here. So I'm going to reattach the back in a second, so I've got all this new space to play with. Could have more engines, could have more ammo, more weapons, lots of different stuff there. But what can I do for me? I mean, what we could do is move the seating area to the centre... Then have, like, stairs going down to the bottom and have this as kind of like a weird room for me to sit in. I mean, that would be super well armoured. I guess then as well, that means we could dedicate the front here to a new missile system. But that is a lot of work for something 
so silly, but I kind of want to because I like the idea of staying in first person as much as possible at the moment. It's not really possible to stay in first person all the time, but I also really need... I just need to redo all of this. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go with that. <laughs> I mean, it looks as silly as you think for a blend in. <laughs> Hang on a second, so someone said this in the comments, I don't know if it's actually true. Can you put... You can put a chair on a spin block. So if I now do this... Oh, that's horrible! <laughs> okay, oh, off, off. <laughs> so the reason for this is that, is that uh, what we could do with the periscope, just because I'm going to be moving the periscope, because I'm going to sit here now, ignore the block of batteries, I've worked, got it, okay. Uh, we could have, just for now, I didn't really like this idea as much as some of the others, but it, as a temporary measure, we could have the camera on a spin block. Okay, please stop, you're going to make me puke. <laughs> Zero, stop. Thank you. Um, yeah, have it on a spin block, have it set to controls like the arrow keys, and then have the same spin block. We Have a camera at the top, and that way you can sit on here, have like the screen there, and then using the arrow keys, turn around. Until we have a proper screen room. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. The higher pitch I go, the more you can tell it's true. And now past Latherix, say something really weird. It's so true, I'm gonna eat your flesh. <laughs> That's how Nightmare Lathric sounds. Walk up there, go around, there's a little bit here to make it easier, and then stairs to the top. Okay, I'll do. Stairs, ladders, same thing. For once, I think I'm happy with the old school lights. Just gonna put them like that. Sideways, you're not, yeah. So we have double thick glass there, we have a glass ceiling, which I need to add some colour to, because right now it looks invisible. That is really nice. Don't know where I'm going to put the periscope now, though. Uh, I mean, we could put it on top, but then this is going to be an absolute chore every time I want to go from one area to the next. So... Don't know. Don't know. You know, everything's all blue and nice, and now it just feels like it's home. Also, can I just say, the moving lights are absolutely fantastic, and I need to use them more. Just everywhere. Just... It's beautiful. In its own special way. I appreciate that uh, while in build mode, you can actually see front when you're using a camera at the front. But yeah, so we have a camera out the front, so we could uh, see directly in front of us while we're sitting here without using the periscope or anything else. We can kind of see through the sides and above us and a little bit behind us just through the glass ceiling at the moment, but that will do. I need to start moving on to the other stuff, because currently we're just working on camera stuff and our little seating area. We do have weapons and stuff to build with. But I'm in a weird mood today, so that's just how it is. So we still have the periscope, it's in a really awkward place, but for now, that'll just have to be that. Focusing on the actual control of this thing now. So we're a little bit faster, which is nice. I've got some more propellers at the back, also some more internal stuff. And I've added way more turning. This is probably the fastest turning sub I've ever had. It doesn't look very quick, but normally I have very slow turning subs. So... That's pretty much that, so we need to arm up the front, though this is probably going to have a weapon on the front at this point. I'm actually considering just destroying all this front section with the missiles, redoing that, uh, redoing the whole periscope section, dedicating something else. And that's pretty much that. Can I actually make this thing tip? <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> that's if I really wanted to go upwards. The PID shouldn't fight me for this, of how I set it up. Can I fly? I know it's a stupid thing to say, and it's a stupid concept, but can I actually fly in this thing as it currently stands? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Lathrix, you've got propellers under the water, you shouldn't be able to fly. And that's true, but I also have Deadly Blades, which means... <laughs> no! Okay, that was a little bit easier than I expected, and I'm a little bit upset about that, gotta be honest. Okay, good. Okay, I lose all control in the air, though. <laughs> How does this look? Yep. Yep, that's... that's how a sub should be. Excellent. Well done. Let's go back in the water.
Oh god, that is horrible! Splish! <laughs> well, good to know. I have emergency controls if I need it. Okay, I kind of did this as a joke, and I just realized the music's turned off, but I just did this as a joke, just to copy the top to the bottom, and just because I thought it looked like a sandwich. But I actually quite like it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and make this look a bit more natural, but yeah, that top section's copied. I'll just hollow it out in a second. And that also gives us plenty more space here. Oh, wow. We could have, like, a glass floor. And, like, another floor underneath. Oh, there's loads we could do with that. That could be really scary looking for anyone with vertigo. But, yeah. I like the idea of that, actually. It's going to be a bit... The portions are going to be a bit off, but this is only, like, stage three of this craft. There's going to be plenty more building sessions, so I am just going to kind of go with what resources I can actually afford. So now I have this little seating area. Well, not a seating area at the moment, but we have this little area here so we get a better view if we want to, while still being about the same as before in terms of our view if we're just stationary. Adds like another level to it. I was going to go underneath here as well, but I think this would be better suited just to armour up. So we'll allow the glass to go through, but armour up like this section. We can put loads of stuff in there to do with the craft. Though I do kind of like it being so segmented. Uh, it's way more blocky than it was a second ago. Now I've added it into a sandwich, but yeah, I like it. So we're going to keep with the sandwich idea. We still have like 70,000 resources to play with. So just going to armor up the back, see how that works. Then we're finally going to start going with the weapons and everything else. Yeah, I think for now, we'll just leave the periscope as it is. Sadly, that's just something I want to do next time we upgrade. But for now, we have a proper seating area. We can see mostly around us when we're fighting. And we can see directly in front of us nice and easily. We could have a camera behind us as well. I mean, we could, we could arguably make this our camera room. But I like this being a seating area like this. I just think it's prettier being able to see outside normally. Even if it is a bit more obscured. Okay, clean up this. Then work on the back section. Now, I know this might be silly, but I'm going to further extend the ship by quite a bit. So, the reason is, what I want to do is have a lot more habitable zones. So, we have this area over here already, which I haven't quite yet finished. Then, this is going to be the periscope idea down here. So, I'm going to have a connecting piece. And I guess we could actually connect it down here. It wouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, so we actually have some use for these side sections to go to this room. This will have the periscope, which will go up and down throughout here. And it just makes it all feel a bit more, more alive. Eventually, we do want the screen room, but that's more in the future. The screen room would be a lot more beneficial as well if we were above water more often. So that's definitely the last thing. It also makes it look a bit less weird. Now it's a bit longer because we've added stuff to the top and bottom. It doesn't look quite so proportionally weird. My only thoughts, though, is the cost. Now, thankfully, armor is quite cheap. And because all this stuff is mostly just decorations, this whole room is very, very cheap. So it's not like we're adding weapons or anything. So I think I'll be able to afford it. Then, I think... This original room, our original periscope room, will be converted into a missile silo. I mean, this whole thing needs to be redone anyway, it's a huge space. So that could be a missile silo, uh, silo, and I think I'll add a couple of the large, or maybe one of the huge launchers. That way, we can go somewhat near the surface, use the torp attachment to allow it to get as far up into the water as possible, as fast as possible. And then we have a super long range, super high strength weapon. Anything with the capability to shoot down missiles will counter us, but hopefully, being a sub, we can avoid them. Sound good? Sounds okay. Okay, how about something like this? So, we can see which way it's facing and everything, but there must be some subtle way to make sure we can always know we're looking forward. I mean, that would work, but, uh, so what I think is, we'll add a chair and everything, and I could have it set very easily so it goes back to this position afterwards, but I think I'd rather have it just lock into place afterwards. And I think the speed's okay, could make it faster, but this seems reasonable. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I really want there. So just attach a chair, make sure there's enough space here so we can get around and sit on it no matter which way it's positioned. And then we can go all the way up. <laughs> Actually, that is a problem. <laughs> I've actually attached the uh, the video screen to the piston, not the flooring piece here. Obviously, that won't be a problem in the future. So, 
fairly subtle periscope. Let's continue. Okay, that is actually very, very cool. Maybe I should make it a little bit faster, but right now it is very easy to control. Yep, so that's in the middle of the room. Let's build up the rest of the room then. Let's make it look decent. Now I think we're currently too thick on armor, so what I could do is use... Where are you? I can never find it. There we go. The reinforced decking and make it look a little bit better in here. Okay, it's pretty simple, but it works. Don't think I'll actually end up using the rest of this section. Just uh, glassed up the outside as well, so we can see outside again. It makes it a bit more vulnerable for me, but I like using lots of glass, apparently, so that's what we're using. In here is just the mess, which I need to fix up. Oh, I have all the storage there. But now I have some extra space at the bottom. I'll move the storage to maybe there-ish. Then the missiles will go in. Then the rest of the armor on the back. Then I'm pretty much good to go after that. Uh, more specific and better missiles. Faster going down and up. A little bit more energy reserve so we can go a bit faster. Although with the extra armor and extra mass, I might need to put in some more blades as well. Which I can do because I'm going to have all this space in a second to deal with. And a periscope, which works fine. So, clean up this room. Then, finally, the weapons. But yeah, clean up this room. Okay, so this is without any of the secondary torps. How long will it take to get to the surface? These are the large missiles, the second largest you can get. Six of them. Actually, that's not too bad. Maybe we don't need the torp attachment after all. Why well, is the more I in the water? I haven't attacked it yet. Well. It's about 50k damage per hit. And these things do go a very good distance and we do still have the eight medium EMP torps on the sides so that's currently all of our weaponry so eight torpedoes and then six of the large missiles now what are they let's have a quick let's see missiles yeah they're large so they're the second largest you can get with huge I was gonna go with huge but they're just too expensive these are the goal the next time we upgrade we're gonna have some of these things I mean just look at the size of the uh, launchers The problem is, for now, this is all the weaponry we can really afford. So, pretty cheesy weaponry. Long-range explosive missiles we can fire from very, very low down. And then EMP torps. Well, this is a cheesy run, so cheesy weaponry is needed. Okay, then let's finish off the craft. Literally, all I need to do now is add some ammo to the back. Uh, maybe some more batteries for a bit more storage and power. And just make the back look like the front. Just balance out a bit. Then we are done, ready to go, and finally ready to fight something. It's a little bit weird. I wanted this room to essentially have uh, no water in it when we're half underwater like we are currently. Because this is my resting altitude where all the fans are uh, currently underwater and everything else. But the problem is... Look at this weird water effect it causes. Now this is uh, disabled in the options, but it's also tied to if you turn it off. We then go back to being essentially underwater and I can't actually see the screen properly. So that's the option I have, sadly. Ah, uh, don't really know a way around that, so we're just gonna stay with that, I suppose. It's only causing this very mild problem when I'm actually at this altitude, so sure. But we are now pretty much done. I need this just so I can actually see uh, the portals and everything else. Okay, yeah, this took an insanely long time. Uh, this is how it looks from the outside at the moment. Actually, let's go underwater so we can see it properly. That would probably be best. Currently, the propeller is a little bit imbalanced. It's not really an issue, it just doesn't look very nice. That's easily fixed with a few numbers, I'll do that in a bit. But yeah, this is it. So we have way more armor now pretty much everywhere. We have three sections which have RTGs. We have two sections with batteries. We have two separate fuel engines giving us the backup power. 
everything is good to go. We have more weapons now in the form of the large missiles, we have the torps from before, and we're moving at about the same speed, and we turn faster. So that's it. That is us done. So let's find a red portal, which should be everywhere, uh, once we go back into the adventure mode, currently in building mode. And let's get at least one fight in. Or at least find a resource ring. Do something. Well, it's about time we go to the new world. Well, the new realm, the more difficult one. Already realising I still can't go at full speed for too long without slowly draining resources. At least it isn't quick. Just one resource here and there isn't really going to be too much of a problem, so it's fine. So now we're on difficulty 35. Let's go a little bit under the water, and let's wait until we find our first enemy. Oh, you too. No, yes. And yes, I should probably name them. Just making sure. Yep, yeah, I do have control over the craft. Even when I'm in the periscope, because I'm not actually turning the periscope right now, I'm just moving left and right. And we can move forwards and backwards manually as well. Great. Turns out it wasn't lasers, it was actually part of the song. Okay, so we're not being hit right now. Get the missiles ready. There's no way we can see above without doing this. The Fractal. I do not know what the Fractal is. Oh, I should have guessed it's going to be a... Uh... Oh, I was going to say Twin Guard. Is it Twin Guard? It looks yellow. That's the only hint I'm getting right now. Okay, one of these smaller enemies are destroyed. So there's like a cluster of smaller enemies and then... There's the Dusk itself. Okay. Looks like we're going to be able to kill these without too much of a problem, as it seems like they can't actually see us. Once again, the cheesiness of the sub. Oh, I love being able to see the weapons go forward. Gaining a little bit of altitude now. I would like to be able to see using the periscope for at least one fight. I think I've got a bit too much delay on the, uh, the sensors on these things. Well, I kind of saw what was happening just near the very end. Uh, not really, just sort of their dead bodies. And there's one of the planes. Missile should be going in soon. Oh, there they are. Just see the, just about to see the trails behind. And goodbye. Lovely in the resource zone as well. Fantastic. Glory to our unnamed sub. I think I am going to try and have more fights where I'm about this altitude. That way the periscope's working, we still have full control, and some enemies still can't see us. Which is pretty nice. The problem with this altitude is, though, it makes us completely vulnerable to enemy subs, because at this altitude I can't use the distraction sticks, which save us so much damage. Okay... Just turning with the periscope now. Anything else? Nope. Looks like we are safe to continue. Yeah. Um, being able to have manual control here is really good. 
It does kind of invalidate the other room, though. That's why I'm not making it... Okay, you can actually have it way easier than the setup I have. I don't want that. I literally have chosen a worse option because I want the two rooms to be separate, even though it's only me here. I like the idea of this being a sub with multiple crew members. Actually, this could be a really fun way to play multiplayer. Make a sub like this, um, have each room control something, like uh, you could have the weapons with screens on as well. You could easily have weapons, main control, and then something like a periscope for sight. Easily, from the depths. And that would be super fun. Ah, now one thing I do need to do, quickly, since I forgot to last time, is add resources, resource gatherers, some resource gatherers once again to this. Since you need to be above the water to actually- Oh, it was an enemy, and I wish I hadn't seen that, but sadly I did, because I'm building- Ahem. Egad's an enemy! Is that Steamworks? Kind of looks like a Steamworks from this vague, blurry outline. Yeah, you're gathering resources though, now that we're here. Oh, it's a wonder! Okay, so they are both deep water guard ships. They look like a Steamworks. That's not a particularly scary craft. Now, I know for a fact in this difficulty there are some really scary things. I know that. I've seen them before in, in past playthroughs. I don't want to up the difficulty this much just yet, so I think what I'll do is I'll gather 100 to 200,000 resources, then I'll probably do another blue portal. Keep on going through blue portals, keep on with the major upgrades. Wow, I really need to change these missiles, don't I? So now I have a bit more fuel. For some reason I can't zoom out normally. I can't... There we go. They're also going a little bit faster, so a little bit faster, a little bit more fuel. So they're a bit less fuel efficient, but they do have a third more fuel now. And the extra speed, obviously, is always going to help. Can't even see us. We've sadly already drained the resource zone, so we'll kill this. Then we'll gather its lovely, lovely resource. As little as it's probably going to be, honestly. Probably not even worth all the shots we took. Well, with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we're just going to continue to hunt other ships, hopefully get loads of resources, and then go through at least one blue portal at the end. That's the goal. And then we can start redesigning it again, hopefully having a proper screen room for when I'm at this altitude or something like that. There's a lot we can still do, so, for now, I'm just going to try and find an enemy before the next video. Have a lovely day, do take care, until next time, goodbye. And I promise, there won't be quite as much of a delay between videos this time. Hopefully, no real life stuff pops up again. I can't promise that, but it's the goal.